So how do we solve these problems? Solving MOSFET circuits. First, you have to assume an operation mode. So you're either going to assume uh, maybe my MOSFET is a saturation, maybe it's ohmic, maybe it's cutoff. Once you make the assumption, let me take you back to this one. If we assume it's in ohmic mode, that means I've got to satisfy this condition and this condition. If, we, if I assume I am in saturation mode, I need to satisfy this condition and that condition. So we need to verify the conditions. Meaning what? If I said I'm in saturation, is VGS bigger than the threshold voltage? And is VDS bigger than VGS minus VT? If the answer is yes and yes, my assumption is correct. If my answer is no, well, maybe it's not in saturation. Let me try to assume it's ohmic region. But I have to verify these values. Now, after we verify them, we need to analyze the circuit. And again, if we find out we made a wrong uh, assumption, modify the assumption. So if assumption is wrong, what do you want to do? Modify assumption. These are the steps I'm going to use. So when you assume operating mode, again, we have cutoff, which means the current is zero. We have ohmic, triode, or ohmic. And we have saturation. Now, most of the time I'm going to assume saturation because the equation for the current is much, much easier to handle than that equation. And that's really the reason why I'm going to assume saturation all the time. If I think my VGS is bigger than V uh, threshold, don't waste your time on this. So we have to be smart what we assume there. So let's take a circuit. There's my circuit. Example one. So let's begin. I'm going to assume saturation. You know, looking at this initially, you go, well, that's a zero voltage. How can you be in saturation? The problem with that is I have the negative 5 volts here. So that value, for example, just to give you an idea, if this value is negative 2 volts here, that means between this and this, you have 2 volts. If this is a negative 3 here, between this and this, I get 3 volts. That's higher than this one. So don't just, oh, that's zero, that means I'm cut off. So I'm going to assume saturation, which means I need to prove that what? Two things for saturation. Where is our cheat sheet I had early? I threw it away somewhere. 
I need to prove that VGS is bigger than the threshold voltage. I also need to make sure that VDS is greater than VGS minus V threshold. Two things to prove. So let's take let's go through it. And let's do this problem. Let's begin. If I'm in saturation, we said the current, I sub D, supposed to equal K times what? VGS minus V threshold squared. Well, in this example, V threshold is 2, and K is what? 0.4. Squared. It depends which direction I go. I'm going to end up with a quadratic equation either way we slice it. But if this is VGS here, this is G, this is S, this is GS. Remember, this source is equivalent, or this one here, if you don't like the way this one is attach minus to plus and put a 5 volts here. This is to ground and this is really attached to it. So if I do KVL right here and I always use plus to minus as plus here, this is VGS. So plus VGS plus the voltage drop here, 1.2K times I sub D minus the 5, because I'm going minus the plus, is equal to 0. So that will tell me what? VGS equals 5 minus 1.2 I sub D. Notice I don't put the K because I'm assuming I sub D is going to be in, in milliamp. So milliamp and K is going to cancel each other out. So I get how many equations? There's one equation, there's a second one right here. I get two equations by two unknowns. And I need to solve them to find what I sub D and what VGS. If I know VGS, I can find VDS, I can check these conditions. I need to make sure these two conditions are true. If they're not, my assumption is wrong. So I can do one of two things. I can substitute this value here, but it's still going to be really ugly. Or I can take this one. Mm, Uh, you choose how you want to handle this. The math's still going to be ugly either way. So, if I substitute that one there, it's math, I will have I sub D equals 0 0.4 times, in place of VGS, let me put 5 minus 1.2 I sub D and there's the minus 2, and don't forget to square it. Now, 5 minus 2 is 3. Now, i got to foil this one out. That would be 9 minus... Where's my calculator here? 3 times 1.2 times 2. I'm using the FOIL method here, just in case you're wondering how I'm doing this, but I'm just doing it in my head. Hopefully, I don't make a mistake in it. One point four four ID squared. Oh, 
parentheses, I drop the bracket. So if you multiply by 0.4 now, I get 0.576 ID squared. 0.4 times that number. What's 0.4 times 7.2? 2.88, negative. But wait a minute, when I move I sub D to this side, that's another minus one. That'll be negative 3.8 eight I sub D plus nine times point four three point six. All of that's equal to zero. Let me divide every one of them by point five seven six just to make the number smaller. Three point eight eight divided by point five seven six. Six point, I'm not going to carry all the digits, I'll just round it up, 6.74 I sub D plus, what's 3.6 divided by 0.576, 6.25. And now we've got to solve for I sub D. Quadratic equation minus b, 6.74 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2 times a and let's see what that square root of that number uh, that's the square root of 6.74 minus 4 times 6.25, close parentheses. Uh, I forgot to square that. Let me try it again. I have a class coming up, and I'm feeling the pressure trying to go faster. According to my calculator, unless I push the wrong button, it's 4.52. So one solution is going to be 6.74. Let me just double check that number. I don't want to go through it, find out. I screwed up there. 6.74 squared minus 4 times 6.25. Yep, uh, 4.52. That's good. So one solution is going to be... 6.74 plus 4.52 and you divide that by 2 5.63 milliamp and the other one is going to be what? the minus divided by 2 and that's 1.11 milliamp now, one of these is going to be good, one is not. Well, which one is good? Remember what VGS is. VGS equals 5 minus 1.2 I sub D. So when I sub D is equal to, uh, to 5.63 milliamp, what is VGS here going to be? It's going to be... 5 minus 1.2 times 5.63, negative 1.756. When I sub D equals 1.11 milliamp, VGS is going to be what? Uh, it's going to be 5 minus... 1.2 times 1.11, 3.67 volts. Now we need VGS to be greater than V threshold if you are in saturation. 
that means VGS has to be greater than 2 volts. Which one of these is bigger than 2 volts? This one. So I'm going to use that one. I'm going to deny that one because I'm assuming saturation. So I did satisfy the first condition. Is VGS bigger than threshold? Yes. I still need to satisfy this to be in saturation. Just because I'm good here, that doesn't mean I'm done. So let me go back here and let me find what VDS equal to. So going back to the circuit here, let me put this paper next to it. Going back to this one, I can find the voltage between D and S. That's VDS. So if I travel this way straight down, that's plus 5, or 5 equals the drop here, which is 1.2K times I sub D plus VDS plus 1.2K I sub D and this is a minus 5 volts. Sum of the voltage in a closed loop is 0. If you make that a loop, that's a 0. Because again, think of this now, if you don't like what I did here, think of the plus 5 volts like this. So if you do a KVL here, you end up with, this is 10 volts equals what? 2.4K times I sub D plus VDS. Well, we know what I sub D is right there. We said I sub D is 1.11 for this case. One one milliamp. Ten equals two point four K times one point one one milliamp plus VDS. Can we find what VDS equal to? It's gonna be what? Ten minus two point four. EE to the 3 times 1.11 EE to the negative 3. These cancel each other out, the 3's. And I got a syntax error, 10 minus 2.4 times 1.11. Let's try again. 10 minus, I'm horrible with calculators, 2.4 times 1.11. I got VDS equals 7.3. 3.4 roughly volts. Now let's see if I can satisfy this condition. Is VDS bigger than VGS minus V7? To be in saturation, you want to satisfy that condition. What's my VDS? 7.34. What's my VGS? I got that right here. 3.67 what's my VT that was given to me here 2 and what do you know we did satisfy that condition so we made an assumption we said we're going to be in saturation based on that we verified that these two conditions are true we solved the problem and we found I sub D to be, what was it? 1.11 milliamp. And VDS equals, what was it? 7.34. And I forgot to write earlier because I got so excited. That was really the question. Find I sub D and VDS. But I was so excited about the problem, I forgot to write the question. So we found both answers. And yes, our assumption is correct. So a correct assumption. I don't have to redo anything. Unfortunately, I gotta stop now because I have a class waiting for me outside. So I'll make another video and I'll put more examples on it. 
See you in the next one.